Okay, first and foremost, I want to give all honours and praises and glory belonging to my Lord and Saviour, whose name is Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahavashai, Bahasham, Wahavaka Kwadash. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and His Son's name is Yahavashai. And double honours to the elder apostles of Great Millstone that teach us truth well and that continue to teach us truth well. And to the hopeful elect across the globe and to the few, the very few brothers and sisters listening and also learning across the globe. Without further ado, we're going to go straight to Jeremiah 1 and we're going to jump straight to verse 9. Then the Lord Jehovah put forth his hand and touched my mouth. Okay. And the Lord Jehovah said unto me, Behold, I put my words in thy mouth. Okay, so the words we speak is motivated, it's inspired by Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. He puts these words in our mouth. He gives us the utterance of what to say, when to say. Okay? This is not of ourselves. Okay? And that should bring you what? Humility. That should bring us humility. This ain't a thing where you could just teach the word. You understand what I'm saying? It's not a thing like that. You have to be inspired by the Holy Spirit. And sadly to say, a lot of men are not inspired by the Holy Spirit. A lot of men are inspired by Satan. Satan is dealing with a lot of men out here. That's why you have to, that's why the scriptures tell you in John, try the spirits. You try the spirits. Okay. Whether they be of the most high, because there be many false prophets that have gone out into the world. You have individuals teaching this truth, but they're against Yahweh Shai. They're not for Yahweh Shai. Okay. The Maccabees, were, they were not prophets, okay? They were warriors, they were mighty men, okay? But they were not prophets. That's what you've got to understand. The prophets are sent back here today, okay? And the prophets, guess what? They're not just going to be touching on the RFID chip. They're going to be touching on what Yahabashai went through, okay? Yahabashai, when he was, when he was um, teaching... He was teaching prophecy, but he was also teaching the things to look out for. The deceits that men would have. False prophets, all these different things. Okay? Men having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. So, again, a man could have a form, an image of godliness, but they could be denying Yahweh Shai. Okay? When we, do, when we do lessons, it's so you understand what we're saying. And it's given to what? The elect to understand. And the elect are going to understand it. We don't do lessons that are drawn out and it's five minutes into the video and you're just going around in circles. No, that's confusion. But that's what Satan, Satan's whole job is to what? To bring confusion. That's his whole job, that's his whole agenda. Okay, let's go to Jeremiah 1 and 10. And the Lord said unto me, I've put my words in thy mouth. See, I have set this day, set thee over the nations. So the prophets, they're set over the nations. Okay. All these other nations, they've been sent out, which means the apostle to be out there, teach this word, and be set up over the nations and over the kingdoms. Okay, so the prophets, you have a special duty. You're actually set up over these other nations and the kingdoms. Okay, to prophesy the downfall of this kingdom. Okay. To root out. So when you're rooting something out, any of you into gardening, what are you doing? You're rooting it out so it does not grow again. You don't want something to grow, you have to take it by its roots. Okay? You get a shovel and deep right down. Take all them roots out so it doesn't grow again. So that's what we're doing, we're rooting out and to pull down. So the prophets are going to root out the lies and they're going to pull down this kingdom with what? The truth. Not the other way around. A false prophet's going to be trying to uphold this kingdom. He's going to be telling you sweet things. He's going to be telling you lies. He's going to be teaching in a particular manner where he's not really trying to wake you up. He's trying to put you back to sleep. That's a false prophet. The true prophets, they're going to be telling you things to wake you up. They're not going to be trying to, to put you back to sleep. A lot of men are teaching in a fucked up spirit. I've got to say, a lot of men are teaching in a messed up spirit. You've got to be careful who you're watching. You've got to examine, you're telling me you've been in this truth and the Lord, you're a man of the Lord and the Lord ain't got to give you discernment, who to listen to and who not to listen to. 
Satan is on a lot of men in these times. And not to say Satan, look, not to say demons don't mess with brothers, but again, it's about combating it. And you've got to know when Satan is targeting you. You have to know that. Okay, through another brother that may have Satan on him. Why? Because he's not fighting. That's why the elder apostles say, do, you, do one video a day. But even with that, a man could still be doing a video a day and he still may have Satan on him. Because he's been overcame by this world. How, how do you overcome this world? By being in the scriptures continually and by applying the scriptures. So we're on Jeremiah 1 and 10. So we're, we're here to root out, to pull down and to destroy. We're not trying to uphold this system. Okay. Like them wicked Negroes that made a covenant with the heathen round about. Okay. Like the, like, um, the Pharisees, the wicked of the Pharisees that were trying to maintain their positions in this kingdom. We're not trying to do that. Okay. Well, I can't speak for all the true prophets are not trying to do that. Because the true prophets, they're going to be against this kingdom. They're not going to be for it. Does this mean you don't do particular things to put, to, to put food on the table? No. But they're not going to be trying to uphold this kingdom. They're going to have a, a whole different spirit about it. And that's going to show. Here it is, we're in the end days. And Yahweh Shai writ all these things. Paul writ particular things of traits that men would have in these last days. So, of course, you're going to see. that Even Apostle Gabar said, you're going to see. It's going to be interesting. It's being interesting. We're already seeing who's really about this truth and who's not about the truth. Yahabasha is showing all these things, he's revealing all these things. It cannot be hidden. You cannot, you cannot hide behind the camp. You cannot behind, hide behind a brother that's diligent, that's fervent. You cannot hide behind them. Because your works are being seen. Every man's work's being seen. Okay, so you cannot hide. Okay, you cannot piggyback. You cannot leech, because you've got a lot of spiritual leeches in this truth. You cannot leech off another man's spirit. Okay, it's about you and Yahabasha. The brotherhood is for what? That structure to help each other out, obviously. But what happens when the brother ain't around? Who are you then? Are you still in the spirit? And these are the things that are being seen. This is what Yahabashah is seeing. Okay. Jeremiah 1 and 10. And to build and to plant. So what do we build? We root it out. Uh, we plucked out. What are we building with? This truth. We're building. And what's that building? The house of Dawad. Okay, which was established on what better promises? Okay, with that covenant with Yahweh Shai, and to plant. So what are we planting with? Because once you pull out, now we're planting. Okay, with what is truth. So if you're planting with the truth, that means you've got to teach all the truth. You can't be holding things back. Because again, is is there anything wrong with live shows? Nothing's wrong with live shows. But what's the point of doing live shows with men that are flipping lukewarm? That men, they're not going to change. Some men are just not going to be reformed. That's just how they are. I've always said, there's a difference between you going off and so forth. And there's another difference when you're just wicked. Yahweh has set certain men in the truth to be true righteous prophets. To strive, even though they may fall. And Yahweh has also set prophets on the left hand side to do the bidding of Satan, Esau. And the spiritual demon Satan, so you cannot really change it no matter how much live shows you do, no matter how much times you say to a brother, yeah, you know, you gotta be on fire. You're not gonna see if a man is set up to be Satan, you're not going to change that. Because Yahweh has put that demonic spirit in that particular person. Okay? This is see when I when I do these videos, I want brothers to see the full picture, the full spectrum of what is happening. Okay? You could try to hold a man's hand. I've, I've, I've been there, I've done that. Yeah, bro, you've got to be on fire. Don't go back into the world. Not one person, two people I've tried to help out. Two. And what ends up happening? They end up going right back into the world. So what, what is this really down to? It's down to predestination. If you are predestined to endure, you are going to endure. Okay? If you are predestined to enjoy, you're going to enjoy, you're going to make it, you're going to make it through all these trials. If you are predestined to come into the truth, okay, and fall back out, that was your lot, okay? It's all about applying, okay? 
man could know a hundred million scriptures okay quote all the laws of the Torah the Tanakh all that you can do all that but guess what you don't have faith the Pharisees they knew the law they knew the law from back to front but guess what they didn't have Yahabashai so it was all null and void that's what we're here to do build and plant with this truth it's lucky I've got just so much different topics on my mind right now let's go to 2 Corinthians 10 Bear me just let's go to Ecclesiastes 3, Baba Kasha. In some heavy, heavy times. So if we're in the end times and the scriptures tell you men shall be lovers of themselves, bolsters, pride, haters of those that are good. Scriptures tell you there's going to be false prophets. So hold on a minute. So wouldn't you want to look around? Wouldn't you want to observe? Because we know about General Gehenna, Yahana. Okay, we know about these. We know about Nate. We know about these guys are wicked. But hold on a minute, what about burning out the wickedness in your own camp? What about men that are around you that may be wicked? This is it. And this is what Yahabashah was doing. He was giving eyesight to his men to see these particular things. He was giving them the eyesight. Paul was giving them the eyesight. Jude was giving them the eyesight. Jude, it says there's certain men crept in unaware. You had men that crept in unaware. And to be crept in unaware, it doesn't mean... You, you didn't um, so much come in the right way because you may have came in but your intentions weren't right you, you were looking at the truth in a particular manner how you thought it was that's what, being crept in unaware you were unaware of what it really takes to be a man of the Lord okay this is a very very serious thing being a prophet is not an easy job it's not an easy task how certain men are putting it out there okay You got you got to give this truth. You got to give this truth time. You got to sit down, study, do your videos. You're not just going off the whim. Is there anything wrong with doing transits on the go, doing videos on the? No, there's nothing wrong with that. But you wouldn't want to be sitting down meditating upon these scriptures day and night, continually. So let's go to Ecclesiastes three, Baba Kasha. To everything that is a season, and a time. And to every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, okay, a time to plant. And you see how these scriptures, see how these precepts link up, a time to plant. What we've done, we've rooted out, we've plucked up, and what we're planting with the truth, a time to plant. So right now it's a time to plant. So if you're planting, what are you doing? You're sowing. What are you sowing? Seeds, this truth. Why? Because there's a time for everything. Okay, bear me just a minute. Okay, and right now it's the time to really, really give full diligence to make the corner election sure. You even got men that scoff at the idea of being diligent. Don't you know the Lord's going to deal with individuals like that? He's going to deal with guys like that. You got guys that hate, you got guys that are jealous, envious. Be very, very careful that these times we are in. If a man, I've always said it, if a man is not truly sincere, sincere about this word, word and he's more in the world, Ain't no telling what this man will do. This man has no limitations. None. None. There's, there's been a lot of strange stuff going on. I'm not really going to go into detail. A lot of strange stuff going on. A lot of strange stuff. Okay, which, well, it's not really strange to the elect because all things happen for what? For, for edification. But you just got to keep, keep your eyes peeled. Okay? And, and more so amongst those that are around you. Okay, I'm not talking about in a state of being paranoid, I'm not saying that. You want to make sure the individuals that are around you, they're sincere about the truth. And even if they're not, Yahweh is just going to eventually get rid of them. Okay, remember what the scriptures say, the house of David is waxing stronger. So again, these are signs that you're going to see, the house of David are going to be waxing stronger. Does that mean brothers are not going to be tired? No, your brothers are going to be, the house of David are going to get tired. <laughs> Okay, but they're going to be strong in the spirit, strong in their measure that they've been given. And you're going to see that in their actions. And the house of Saul is going to be waxing weaker. Okay, okay. The house of Saul is going to be waxing weaker and they're going to be what? More evil. They're going to have an evil eye towards their brother. So you can even have a man that's in your camp 
that you may be the house of David and he may be the house of Saul. So he's going to be waxing weaker. He's going to be waxing evil. He's going to have an evil eye towards you. He's going to be chucking javelins at you, trying to take you out. Okay, because the spirit's on you. That's what happened, what, when David was anointed. What did King Saul do? Okay. He was spy he, he, he actually set up men to spy on King David. His whereabouts, where he was, he was obsessed with him. He was chucking javelins at him. David needed to escape. So this is the full measure of the truth. And the house of David, that's what they're going to be doing. They're not going to be around the whole group of individuals. More time, they're going to be on the run from the house of what? Of David, of, 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 of Saul. Okay. So there's a time for everything on this earth. Bear me just a minute. Because the prophets, what's the prophet's job to do? To be occupied in prophecy. How are you going to call yourself a prophet? But a pro a, a prophecy is the last thing on your mind. You're just babbling, you're just doing videos, babbling, empty babbling. That's not prophecy. Prophecy is what? Things that are what? Prophecy of things happen before they happen. But guess what? You see how it works. If you're about this world, if you're for the world, you're not going to want to go into prophecy. Because guess what? Prophecy, it threatens your... It, th it threatens your reality. So if you're a man of the world, prophecy is going to threaten your reality because you're trying to uphold this world. So this is why when Yahabashah came on the scene, the Pharisees knew because the records were there. But guess what? When he came, they already had their own thing set up. So guess what? That was the, ah oh man, Yahabashah is here. So guess what? They needed to take Yahabashah out of the way because Yahabashah was a threat. To what? To their build up in this Roman system. So again, this is where you've got to read the scriptures with understanding and see what's going on then, what was going on then, 2,000 years ago, and see what's going on now. Because the same individuals are back here today. Everybody's back here in their lots. Same thing. Nothing's changed. The, ex the exact same thing. Okay? Nothing is new underneath the sun. So these same individuals, what do you, what do you think they're going to be doing? They're going to be spe speaking smooth things. They're going to be uh, saying things in a particular way. Okay, going around in circles, not really getting to the point. Yahabashah was straightforward, he was straight to the point. Jeremiah, all the, all the true prophets, they were straight to the point. They weren't going around in circles. Okay. That's a deceiver. That's Satan. Okay. <laughs> Going around in circles. <laughs> Not getting to the point. Let's go to um, 2 Corinthians 10 and 45. 10 and 4 and 5. Baba Kishar. It's interesting. It's very interesting how this is all going to turn out. Very, very interesting. A lot of men have taken deals. A lot of men have taken deals. A lot of men have sold out. There's a lot of stuff happening. I'm talking about in Great Millstone. A lot of things are happening. Okay. A lot, a lot of scumbags in the truth. A lot of scumbags, man. No integrity whatsoever. Men, they will have to. They, they, they have the time to travel around London, all around London. But what you don't have, you don't have a time to what? Sit down and do a video. Come on, man. Second Corinthians. 10 and 5. You may be able to fool some, but not all. Okay. Bear me just a minute. Scripture says, He that believe on me, what, in John, somewhere in John 7 and 38, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And it, again, that's another sign of those that truly believe in Yahweh Shai. So even with just you believing, with that measure you got, every day there's going to, you're going to leave three or four videos at least. Because you're going to have topics, even the things around you, you're going to be able to filter that through the scriptures. A lot of men are just leeches, they just leech off your spirit. You can only do that for so long. Okay, the scriptures talk about the wise virgins and the foolish virgins. Those that had oil and the five wise that didn't have the oil. So those that don't have the oil, in these times right now, they're going to be running to your page. Backtracking, backpedaling of what you're saying. Okay, that's not being inspired. Is there anything wrong with going on a brother's channel and you um you you backpelling of what he's saying? Nothing's wrong with that. But every video, 
that's what that's called what you haven't got the oil the scripture says go and buy your own oil <laughs> okay lest we not have enough so everything is being shown let's go to where was we second second corinthians 11 and let me just a minute There's only, there's, only, there's only so much you can do for, for an individual to help him out. I've been there, I've tried. Okay. So let's go to 2 Corinthians 11 and 4. For the weapons of our warfare. Okay, and guess what? We're not, we're not, we're not coming in the spirit of the zealots. Because they were all about being carnal. They were very carnal, they were very brutish. The zealots, the, the Sakaris. These were zealots, okay, the, the, Maccabean, the Maccabean revolts, these were zealots, these were those that were trying to what, take down the Roman Empire, okay, these were carnal men, these men weren't spiritual, okay, for the weapons of a warfare, not, well you had certain sect of the Maccabees that were spiritual because nobody's saying the Maccabees, there were some of them that were, were not the, of the elect because there were Maccabeans that were of the elect. But the majority of them were carnal, okay? They weren't waiting on Yahweh Shai, they were depending on their own might. And Yahweh Shai, and, and Yahweh Shai, what did he say to Peter when he uh, smote the high priest's air off? Okay, what did he say? Put thy sword in thy chef. He that what? Liveth by the sword shall die by the sword, because that's Esau's blessing. So we know better than to what? To do that. Because that's Esau's blessing, that's what he was blessed with. A spiritual man's going to be waiting on Yahweh Shai. Okay. And when I say waiting, I'm saying waiting with unbelief. Waiting with faith. Okay. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So it says for the weapons of our warfare. What's the weapons of our warfare? Read scriptures. So if these are weapons of our warfare, wouldn't you want to be using the weapon? How are you in battle but you're not really using your weapon? You know. A sword. You, can, you use a sword for what? Offense and defense, not just a shield. You can also a sword is also used for offense and defense. Ching ching, ching ching. That's offense and that's defense. That's why it makes them noises. Okay. But mighty for the most high to the pulling down of strongholds. So these words are mighty, and you notice that word pulling down, which we read, read in what Jeremiah one and nine, and which we also read in what Ecclesiastes uh, what three, to the pulling down of strongholds. So what's the stronghold? The lies of this system. That's them strongholds. Esau's system is a stronghold. What's the stronghold? His his barrier. Okay. Pulling down strongholds. So we're pulling down strongholds. This man's system with this word every single day. This is how powerful these words are. These words are powerful. This is what we're doing. If you don't have no faith, you're, you're just going to believe oh, these are just words on the page. This truth has to, the scriptures talk about those, the word did not profit them because it was not mixed with faith. So again, it's about faith. A man could know all the precepts again, but does he have faith? Because if you don't, guess what? You're only fooling yourself and then eventually it's going to be shown. Eventually. Okay, so the brothers that, again, the brothers that are not serious and you know, you should know the depths of your own mind. You're not really serious. Pray to be more serious. Pray. Okay? Because you should be serious about this continually. Not because I say. Not because the apostles say. Because, because you fear you have a shy. That's why. Verse 5. Casting down imagination. So this word, cast, casting down. You casting down something. What, is, what are you doing? You're breaking it down. Imaginations. So this is what this word is doing. Okay? And every, you know what I'm every high thing, okay, what's the high thing? Lies, things that exhort themselves, things that are not really scriptural. And you know what it says, when I say casting down every high thing, a helicopter goes right over. So this is casting down every single high thing, okay, that exhorteth itself against the knowledge of the Most High beginning with this word okay and bringing it into captivity so that would also include the philosophies of this world 
if, you, if you're a Christian, you're still calling on Serapis Christos, Jesus, or Buddhist, or whatever train of thought you have, or you just believe in yourself, guess what? You're not in the truth. And that's what this word's to do, to cast down what? Them imaginations, the lies, the deception. Okay, so we don't need to sit up all night, okay, studying you, okay. No, this word studies you, this word searches out your mind. You understand what I'm saying? I'm bringing every thought to the obedience of my shout because every knee is going to bow, every tongue is going to confess. This word brings every thought to the obedience of my shi'at, one way or another. Okay, you may be thinking one thing, but guess what? The word will search you out. Okay? And having no readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So, this word, what does it make the true men of Lord? It makes them more obedient to their calling. Because many, many are called, few are chosen. Few are chosen. So that, guess what, this, the scripture says, it, when it says many are called, few are chosen, that means there's going to be many, many individuals are going to be called into the truth. Many. But few are going to be chosen. And the chosen few, they're going to be ridiculed by the many. You see what I'm saying? Bear me just a minute. Let's just get that umbrella because it is raining out here. Bear me just a minute. I have to multitask. Okay. So the many... It lets you know the many that are called, okay, they're not going to be chosen. There's only going to be a few out of the many that are going to be chosen. Okay. So we're done with that. Bear me just a minute. Oh, bear me just a minute. Bear me just, verse 7. Do you look on the things after the outward appearance? We're still on the same, we're still on Corinthians 11 and 7. Do you look on things on, on the outer appearance? A lot of men that are, tend to be very, very um, carnal, they look on things on the outer appearance. As in forms of, well, he can't speak eloquent, well, he doesn't know this breakdown. So what? So what if a man doesn't know a particular breakdown? But does he, does he have the faith? Does he believe in Yahweh Shai? Is he pushing? Because you can know a breakdown, but, like you, but you don't have any faith. Because all I'm seeing is men, if, if nothing's wrong with bringing out info, but Esau can do that. Esau can bring out info. Okay. Okay. He can bring out info. But you can bring out info, you can bring out history. But where is your mind? Where is your mind? Is your mind on Yahweh Shai? Is your mind on salvation? Okay, because when all hell breaks loose, it ain't going to be about how much info you know. It's going to be about your faith. So this, this, again, this is why these videos are being done, to build up your faith. Working out your relationship between you and Yahweh Shai. Okay? So do you look on things on the outward appearance? Okay, where was I? Verse 7. On the outward appearance, if any man trusted himself that he is Mashiach, let him of himself think this again, that he is Mashiach, even so we are Mashiach. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, Paul, because he could have done that, but he chose not to, which the Lord have given us for the edification. Okay? So again, Paul was given what? We skip to what? For edification. Okay? And not for your destruction. Okay? I should not be ashamed. But I may not see him as I would terrify you by letters. Because again, when Paul was speaking, why did it say he will not terrify you by letters? Because the letters were harsh, very harsh. You read, you read some of the letters, some of the things that Paul read. You would think he, you would think he, you would think, see, having a kind of man, you would think he hates the apostles. No, he had to write it in a terrifying way. Why? So because Paul couldn't be with them everywhere, so he had to write it in a particular manner so that fear was there. Because you know, you know how our people are. They only want to get in order when men are around them. Or when the decrees put out by the elder apostles. That's when they see that's not fair. Well, that's the fear of men. Which only brings you what? You a snare. For his letters say they are weighty and powerful. Okay, weighty, in other words, hard to understand some of Paul's letters. Okay. But if Yahweh has given you the what the understanding and he's what also given your apostles to break it down to you so you can understand. And powerful. But his bodily presence is weak. So, again, a man could... he The way he speaks, you may not like the way he speaks. 
But this man, you have a I said I will not hear them this minute. I will not hear the, 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 the proud of them, but the power of them. So it's about the power. You have a he was teaching them power. Not in a, not in a, not in a, uh, you know, uh, but uh, you sound what you sound, you sound like you sound scared. You sound weak. You sound like Esau standing right next to you saying, no, don't say this, don't say that. He wasn't speaking in that particular spirit, you know, a weak spirit. Okay, so there's a difference be, be, between being weak in the flesh and being weak in the spirit. Okay, but his bodily presence is weak. Okay, so if you see Paul, in other words, he wasn't strapped with muscles. How he spoke, okay, if you would see his bodily presence, it, it, it would seem that you see this man, you'd think, hold on a minute, was this, was this the man that was writing these letters? Because his bodily presence was what? On a, on a, on a different basis. Okay, he could have been what, somewhat slim. Okay. And his speech contemptible. He says his speech, in other words, harsh. Okay. Okay, a bit harsh. A bit rough around the edges. So, again, it's about the message. But get men are effeminate. That's why they, they, they look at you in a particular way. If you're coming in in a, in a, in a particular spirit, they look at, oh, nah, don't say that. You know? You know, you got men that they want you to be in their spirit. No, it's about the spirit that Yahweh has given you. Okay, that's why men would try to surround you in a demonic circle. Okay, ah, oh, it's not working. Yeah, it ain't working. You cannot manipulate the men of. The, you cannot manipulate the men of the Lord. And even when you do that, that's just that's just a condemnation to yourself. Why would you need to manipulate a man of the Lord unless you're wicked yourself? All these things are being seen. All these things, even men you may have looked up to, okay. Does that mean you talk shit? No, you don't talk shit about them, but you realize, hold on, this man just may not have it. That's why you got to fear the Lord. Let us such as think this that such as we are what we are in words by letters, which what what are letters? Epistles. Right now, what I'm doing. This is an epistle. This is an electric. Epistles to the brothers and sisters out there listening and also learning. Okay? Because what we don't need to travel. What we got the internet now where these, these videos are being what issued out. Okay. When we are absent, so Paul a lot of the time he was absent for he couldn't be at all these places at different times, Corinthians, Ephesians, okay. And all these different churches. He couldn't be around all these different churches at one time, Philippians. Such we will be also indeed when we are present. So even though Paul was absent, what was he doing? He was sending these letters as warnings to stay on track, to keep on pushing. Okay? Such we will be also indeed when we are present. Okay? So you want to be the same way when Paul... So Paul was basically... He was letting you know. Be the same way when I'm present and when I'm not present. And most of the letters, most of the people he was harsh on was the Ephesians and the Corinthians because they were very, very um, hard-headed. There was a lot of things going on within these churches. A lot of things going on. So the, a lot of the weighty letters, a lot of the harsh letters were ready to the Corinthians and some of them were to Thessalonians as well because there was a lot of wickedness happening that Paul saw. Paul had the discernment to see. You understand? Paul was given the discernment to see individuals that were not right in the truth. Okay? And we can go to even an example of that. Let's quickly go to. Excuse me. Because the book of Timothy. Who was it written by? Was it written by just Timothy? No, it was written also by Paul. Okay? Along with Thessalonians. Bear me just a minute. <sighs> Excuse me. So let's go to um. There's a lot of good stuff in these scriptures, man. You gotta read these scriptures with a spiritual eye. Okay. So let's go to some of the examples of what Paul was warning, the things he saw in the spirit to warn us of. Just some of the things. You know what? This is one of them. Let's go to Ephesians. Because there's plenty. Let's go to one of them. Ephesians 4 and 14. 
Let's start at 13. And it says, till we all come in the unity of faith. And true unity is being in one mind. So if you're in one mind, what you're going to be, first of all, you're going to believe in the same doctrine. Okay. You're not going to be partial. Okay. And you're going to be what? Fervent for the truth. So even unity, for you to be unified, you have to be in what? The same part of being in the same spirit means you're going to be diligent with the measure you've been given that's part of being unified why do you want to do why do you, why do you want to be unified with guys that are not really about the truth you don't want to be unified with them because it's going to go two ways they're going to try to water down your spirit quench your spirit or you're going to what if you're fervent what you're going to put that fire upon their ass to keep them on fire so you see how it works that's why the scriptures tell you in Amos 3 and 3 can two walk together lest they be agreed. And if you're really fervent, if you're really about the truth, men that are lukewarm, that are not really about the truth, they're not really going to be around you. Or they may want to be around you to leech off your spirit, but other than that, they're not really going to want to be around you. Because you're basically, you're condemning their spirit. And that's how your Yahweh show is. That's how the prophets were. Okay? And that's why guys, they want to over talk you Ah uh, yeah, make sure he don't speak. It's the same spirit back here today. Make sure he don't speak. You know? Keep a tab on him. Keep an eye on him. Yeah, you can do that all you want, but Yahweh is watching you. So the same wicked men are back here today doing the same stuff, whether they know it or not. Okay? And the knowledge of the Son of the Most High unto the perfect man unto the measure of the stature of fullness of Mashiach. So obviously we're seeking to what? To be in that measure. Level up to the measure of Yahweh Shai. The scripts say, mark the perfect man. The perfect man was Yahweh Shai. Okay. Verse 14, that we henceforth. So, Paul, this is him speaking, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. Why did he say this? Because there was individuals that came into the truth and they fell out. They were tossed and fro. And children, they're very what, vulnerable. They believe in anything. You can tell a children are lying. He would just believe it. Okay. This goes, this goes into fables. Okay, tossed to and fro, carried about. So if you're tossed to and fro and you're carried about, that means you're double-minded. And what causes one to be double-minded? When you're lukewarm. So again, it's, that's why you don't really want to be lukewarm because the dangers of what you now you become, your judgment becomes all messed up. You become double-minded, you know. And then you become what bugged out, thinking you're in the truth, but you're not. Tossed to and fro and carried about. With every wind of doctrine, just like the sea, you see the sea how it carries about, okay, ships, okay, how it carries about all different type of things, okay, on that sea, okay, carried about with every wind of doctrine, just like when there's what um a whirlwind, what does it carry about? Anything that's in that sight, okay, every wind of doctrine. So you got that goes guys that have came into this truth. They started watching other camps and now they're bugged out. They're bugged out. They may turn back to Christianity or they may watch other camps. They may like the way particular individuals are speaking and say, well, I like the way he's speaking. I like the way he uh, brings it across. This camp, oh, I don't like their language. Great moves and I don't like their language. You know? Bro, grow up. Grow up, man, because I'm sure you're watching, um, you're listening to rap music or you're watching a movie where that has swearing in it. So our people are flipping hypocrites. They're hypocrites. And these will be the same individuals to tell you about the law. And carry it about with every wind of doctrine. So these are men that come into the truth. They start watching other groups, then they start bugging out. Okay? Running to this camp, that camp. Then all, of, all eventually, what? You know? They're just double-minded because they were never rooted in the truth. Scriptures tell you that in Matthew 7 to be rooted. Okay? Bear me just a minute. That's what we seek to be rooted. Okay? You're rooted in what? You cannot be moved if you're rooted in Yahweh Shai. Okay? And you, you know it's a pattern. You know, when I do my videos, I like to say all praise to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. And at the end of that, I don't say in the name of you, if Jesus Christ. I don't say that. You're bugged out. You're bugged out. You know? Why are you gonna see you, you, you completely did you completely destroy the whole objective when you say 
first and foremost, I want to give all praise to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Bro, you're bugged out. But a lot of guys they can't they can't see they can't see what's actually going on. They can't see what's going on. Okay. Covered about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men. So men do this ever so slightly. Okay. Because of what they got deceptive spirits on them. Why are you talking why are you talking about Christ for? Jesus Serapis Christus. How you been in the truth but you turn back to Christianity? Okay, that means you're twice dead plucked up from the roots. Okay, bugged out. Okay, that's why when I came to truth, what's the most important thing? Basics. The fundamentals. That's what keeps you grounded. Okay, you want to go into all the deep stuff. Because certain videos you watch, you know, oh, I'm, I'm going to try to break it. No, 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 there's, there's no such thing of trying to break it down. You either know what you're talking about or you don't know what you're talking about. If you don't know what you're talking about, you go, that's why elder apostles got particular channels. Elders of Milk, Elders GMS, Elders in Transit. They got different channels where you can go back to and you can study. This is that men are too so flipping lazy that they don't want to study. Oh, I'm going to try to break this down. You're playing with fire. You're playing with fire. You have a, you have a know something because you don't know it. Okay, and if you don't know it, you look it up. Then you do the lesson. If you don't know it, don't put out that lesson. Because guess what you're doing? You're, you're um, putting a what? An occasion for your brother to stumble. And guess what? That makes you a false prophet. Okay? By the slight of men. So when you go into slight, it's like slight of hand, cunningly, wickedly, deceptively. So you've got men that are very, 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 very deceptive. Okay? You've got men that have no business teaching this word. No business teaching at all. Brutish men. Start a video. They, they can just about say the name Yahabashai. They can just about say double honours to the elder apostles of Great Millstone. What's all that about? Uh, 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 uh. You're fucking dead, man. Dead zombified. I don't want to be in that spirit. I don't want to be in that spirit. But that's what happens when you're not sincere. The Lord gives you over to that. Got men sounding zombified. Uh, 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 sounding like Master P. No, okay? This is not a joke. Okay, by the slight of men and cunning craft, so they do this cunningly. They do this cunningly, cunning craft, which is basically sorcery. That makes you a witch. That makes you a sorcerer. Okay, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. You know, they're really jealous. They're really jealous at the men of the Lord. They're really jealous at the elder apostles of Great Millstone. What they've taught us. And they're trying to do something of themselves. Now follow me. No, no, no. The ones that are going to follow you are those that are supposed to follow you. They're the ones that are going to follow you. Okay. But we are what to follow the elder apostle great Moose, and you have to believe they have the 100% truth. That's another thing. You even got men, they don't believe in 100% truth. They don't, they don't believe in it. They frown. They laugh at it. They laugh at the idea of having 100% truth. When, hold on a minute. When Yahabashah was on the earth, did not he have a doctrine? Yeah, he had a doctrine. And guess what? Men, they were following his doctrine. Okay, so Yahabashah, when he came on the earth, it wasn't that he, he didn't have it. He had the doctrine. He was the word. So when Yahabashah left his disciples, what would guide them? What would they believe in? Would they just believe, what, did they all just have their own doctrine now? They had a doctrine and it was taught. And then what? It was of the Heavenly Father that was given to Yahabashah and Yahabashah gave it to them to teach. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Bear me just a minute. Bear me just a minute, Akiam. The apostles weren't doing their own thing. They stuck to what Yahabashah, what Yahabashah taught them, which was the doctrine, 100% truth. Okay, you got men saying, well, you know, maybe uh, this group has uh, 20 here, 20 there. Okay, and um, Great Millstone has 60. No, 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 that's wrong. If you believe in that, then that means you don't, you're not confident that you believe it. you have the whole truth. And if you believe that, that means you're going to be going to other groups thinking they have the, the, uh, the whole truth. Do you have other groups that follow Great Millstone in their doctrine? Yes. Well, obviously, they have the truth. Do you have any other groups that are not part of Great Millstone that are teaching different doctrines? Yes. They're the ones you've got to stay away from. Okay. 
And this is where men get caught out then. Okay. And guess what? It's that like, you know that um game, what's it, ping pong? You remember that old game ping pong? Yeah, them demons start playing ping pong with your <laughs> them demons start playing ping pong with your mind. Because you were not rooted, you were not grounded. Okay, so you start watching these other camps. Oh, maybe they do have the truth and great moves are not wrong. You're double-minded, you have no business teaching. Okay, it's better you just stay your ass at home. Okay. Until you actually realise who has the truth. Okay. Let's go to first, bear me just a minute. This is first John 2 and go straight to 19. They went out from us. So you had individuals that went out from us. Why did they go out from us? Why did they leave? Okay. But they were not of us. Why? Because they were not of us. And it's clear. Because if they were of us, see, and that doesn't mean in any, any way that, again, because you have individuals that may do their own thing. But they're still teaching the doctrine of Great Muslims, so that means they're still a part of the body. Okay. For if they had been of us, they would have no doubt have continued with us. So you would continue. You would continue teaching. What? The doctrine. Okay. The true doctrine. But they went out. So these are individuals that leave, that go out from amongst us, that they might be made manifest, made known. Okay. And that word for manifest is root. That they were not all of us. So that's these things start eventually these things are gonna manifest more and more. Who's really of Yahawashai and who's not of Yahawashai? And a good sign that you see is guys that they depart, because you have some guys that they depart or they excommunicate themselves, so whatever it may be, but they continue. And you have go guys that break off and they start teaching another doctrine or they start linking up with other men. That have spoken against the apostles of Great Millstone and start teaching a whole other doctrine. Yeah, black, black, African. Bro, if if you're taking on that mindset, you're basically that means you've t you're a dog returned back to his own vomit. Basically, basically, you're you're like a dog turned return back to his own vomit because what does black mean? Black means void of life. Black also acquaints to what to death. Okay. So basically, if you're calling yourself black, that means you've been bl you've been blinded, you've been what put back to so the Lord. He can wake you up just to put you back. Yahweh can wake you up just to put you back to sleep. African, what does Africa mean? Africa is derived from what? An Edomite. You do know the term Africa actually derived from an Edomite. Afrio Africanus, Scipio Africanus, Leo Africa, uh, Scipio Africanus. Because I got a book on Hannibal, and this same individual was warring against Hannibal. There was three wars. And these were known as what? The Punic Wars. And this individual was always plotting and scheming against Hannibal. And he was the Edomite. So that whole term, it's not even a term that belongs to us. That's Esau's term that he names you. And you're running with that. So you're running with Esau's narrative. So what does this mean? That means you're not really, you haven't really learned of Yahweh Shai. You're still blinded. So again, men can pick up this Bible but still be blinded and not understand what's happening. Why? Because the Lord Yahushua has blinded them. He does not want them to get it. Why? So he could be justified in destroying them. So again, Yahushua, he can blind this man. Yep, I'm going to blind him. I'm going to have him come to camp. I'm going to have him get into these scriptures. But I'm going to blind him. So I can be justified in destroying him. Okay. Because if you blind someone, that means they're going to be breaking down the scriptures wrong to their own condemnation. They're going to be teaching a whole other doctrine. So again, these things need to happen. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So they went out from us. But you have an unction. This is verse 20. An unction is a, means anointing from Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shai. So we have an unction from the Holy One, which is Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shai. And ye know all things, so we know all things. Of what? Of what we've been given. All things. All things is a hundred percent true. So again, when Yahabashai left the apostles, what did he do? He gave them a hundred percent of the truth. Because if he didn't, then guess what? They would be lost, they wouldn't be able to teach. 
So it's the same thing today. You have to believe that you've been given what? 100% truth. Okay? Does that mean you're going to know everything that apostles, everything that apostles don't know? Because it's different levels. There's certain things the apostles don't know that they're not going to tell you because it may mess up your It just may not be for you to know at that particular moment and that particular time. But you know, what you've been given of what you know is what 100% truth and you're confident in that. Because if, if you don't believe you get, you've been given 100% truth, why are you out there teaching? You shouldn't be out there. You have no business teaching. Really, you should stay your ass indoors until you what? You master what you're teaching the basics. Until you know what you're talking about. That's a very dangerous game to play. I, w I wouldn't go out in the highways and byways if I didn't know what I was talking about. See, part of that confidence is being out in the highway, you know what you're talking about. Oof, imminent and Aaron, when you're doing a video. Uh, uh, but, but, but I'm not sure. No, if you're not sure, don't teach it. And you know all things. The scripture says we know all things. So anybody telling you, oh no, you don't have we don't we don't have a hundred percent truth. Well are you walking in a hundred percent truth? Obviously, of course you're walking in a hundred percent truth if you have a hundred percent truth. What type of question is that? Are you walking in a hundred percent truth? If 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 you if 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 you're in the word, of course you're walking in a hundred percent truth. If the word is in you, of course you're walking in a hundred percent truth. Because the word is Yahweh Shai. But if you don't accept your Habashai, then you're not walking in 100% truth. You're walking in your own truth. Okay, because a man says, ah, oh, truths. What's truth? There's only one truth. There's not truth. There's only one truth. That's some shit you've made up in the world. Truth. That's your truth. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth. So again, these things will not be written because we know not the truth. But because you know the truth. But because you know the truth and because you know it and that no lie is of the truth Because there's no lie that is of the truth The truth is 100% Because if there's a lie that's of the truth then that means it wouldn't, it, there wouldn't be truth That means it's not 100% that means it's tainted What Esau does he mixes lies in with the truth so that means what? The truth ain't so much tainted that means it's just a lie That's man a man of truth is going to speak the truth he's not going to sugarcoat stuff Okay Who is a liar but he that denieth that Yahweh Shai is Mashiach? Okay, so that's a liar. Those that deny Yahweh Shai. And the Pharisees, they were denying Yahweh Shai because when he came, they didn't accept him, most of them. Okay. He is the Antichrist, the Anti Mashiach. There's many. Guess what? As, as, as scary as it may sound, you have those that are Anti Mashiach even in the truth. Okay, calling on, the, calling on the name of Yahweh Shai, but they're really against Yahweh Shai and his prophets. Guess what's going to happen to these individuals? They're going to suffer a horrible death, horrible death, rightfully so. Okay, he that is the Antichrist is the, he that denieth the Son, the Father, and the Son. So, again, Yahweh Shai was speaking on this. That's why you got to read John 8 44. Read all of John 8, read all of John 8. Okay, read Matthew 23, read upon these things because it gives you a more understanding of how these men were, how demonic they were. Read John and 10 and 10 as well. Very important chapters. Okay, that Yahweh was speaking on these Pharisees because they were talking about the Father. The Father, Yahweh. Because a man can say, Abba Nawa, Yahweh, Akkad. A man can say that all day. The Pharisees were saying that. Abba Nawa, Yahweh, Akkad. They were saying that. But guess what? They were, um, they were, they were, they were trying to put Yahavashai to the side. Okay, and they were put, and they were putting Baal first, and they were pushing Yahavashai to the side. So, what do you think the judgment's going to be to these individuals? It's going to be a harsh judgment, a very, very, very harsh judgment. Okay, so the scripture says, "He that denieth what, what the, the 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 son, he that denieth Yahavashai, is yeah the Moshiach." Also deny the father and the son. Because when Yahweh came on the scene, because when Yahweh came on the scene, what were they doing? They denied him. So it shows you how wicked them. I'm telling you, them Pharisees were wicked, really, really wicked, really corrupt, really wicked. 
That's what Yahweh Shah was, that's part of prophecy. We talk about other stuff, Jacob's trouble, that was part of that you were going to have men today that were claiming to be men of the Lord, but they weren't claim, they, they were not men of the Lord. They were fake, they were phony, they were actors. Okay. Let's go back to where we were, bear me just a minute. So let's go to verse 23. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same have not the Father. So you don't have the Father. The Father's not dealing with you. Okay, if you deny the Son. But he that acknowledge the Son have the Father also. So the Father's backing you. Why? Because your is backing you. Because you acknowledge him. And therefore he can sup with you. The Holy Spirit is dealing with you. But the Holy Spirit is not dealing with you if you don't acknowledge the Son. A lot of men want to push. They do in videos, but they want to push your to the side. But they can speak about all this other stuff, all this worldly stuff. Or the news, or, or things on the news, but they can't speak about Yahweh Shai. Okay? Because when Yahweh Shai was actually speaking about particular things, he was speaking about them, the wicked of them. So again, if you were those wicked individuals that were, that were against Yahweh Shai, of course you're not going to be able to speak of Yahweh Shai. Because it's really, it's just a condemnation to your own soul. Okay? And it says, let that therefore abide in you. Which you have heard from the beginning, which is what Yahweh Shai, the Holy Spirit, if that you which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you. So the things we've been taught, it has to remain in us. Okay? Remain. Okay? And that's called what being grounded. Which you have heard from the beginning that shall remain in you, and you also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that He had promised us, even eternal life. You understand? And this is the promise, okay, that he had promised us even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. Why? Because this whole chapter we read, those that don't believe in Yahweh Shai, they have seducing spirits on them. They have the spirits of the world. So these things are written concerning those that seduce us. Because the spirit of the world is basically a seducing spirit. And I want to do a lesson on that later on, shortly after this lesson. Okay, those that um, are of the world, those that have the cares of the world, those that are entangled with the world. Okay, so all these things were written what for our learning. Stick to the doctrine, stick to what the elder apostles have taught us and remain with that. You doing that, you're on the right path. So with this, I'm going to shut up here. Lord willing, this was edifying. And until the next time, shalom to the hopeful elect. Shalom.